episode of sports flowing in their veins. Mackie and Judd on Score North and scorenorth.com. A one-year extension is not a long-term commitment at this stage. Certainly, you've got a head coach in Kevin O'Connell who was with Kirk Cousins previously in Washington. He believes in him on a lot of levels and wants to see exactly what they can do with him. Nowadays, around the likes of Justin Jefferson and Adam Thielen and Dalvin Cook in an offense that is going to be tailored to his strengths. But as we've discussed a lot in recent weeks, the Vikings had to do something about Cousins' contract. His cap number was up forwards of $45 million this year. So do you do a longer-term deal? Do you do a short-term extension, which is what they did? Or do you just add four years? They had to figure out a path forward. This was it, the one-year extension. You like that? You like that? Uh, For the people tuning in wondering, how are those guys going to – are those guys going to still have jobs on Monday? The joke's on you. That's right. Still employed. I haven't gotten the phone call yet anyways. I don't know about you guys. I, I did no. get a check. I did get a text. It's not it's not looking good, but we'll wait and we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, exactly. Uh, just going through uh, my my direct messages on Twitter and uh, just the responses from the first hour after Kirk Cousins signed yet another ironclad no trade clause contract to be the Vikings quarterback through 2023. Right, I'm just going to go through here. Let's let's start with this one. Uh, the first DM came from Kirk Cousins Season on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Bleep you, suck it, Mackie. Mm. Here's another one. Dancing on your grave. Uh, another one here. Uh, I really don't want to hear from you guys on score after you've been hating on Kirk for the last several months. I agree with that one. Mike chimes in and says, and we've said all along, you and FUD... Fud, yeah, I'm fud are the biggest crybabies in Minnesota. Oh, yeah. Uh, TJ says, Phil, if the Vikings win the Super Bowl, you guys should get a Kirk O'Connell and Quasey tattoo tramp stamp. Oh, we can talk about that. Maybe we'll, we'll talk about that. Make Judd get a tramp stamp. Uh, welcome to Common Sense. How much bleeping crow are you and your followers oh. choking on today? I mean, seriously. <laughs> oh, do you, do you know what the best part about this entire thing is? Romeo says, suck it, Mackie. Yeah. Mel says, suck it, you dumb little bleep to me. <laughs> the best part about this oh, thing man. is, the, but and, and here's what I've never really comprehended about people like that, is they think that the Vikings doing this is justification that the Vikings are right. Now we wait and see. Like, like that's the thing is it, it's like the, the old thing when, when you take a pot shot at like a player or coach and the player or coach actually responds and it's okay. But I mean, the response is and the response from the stands of that player or coach is, oh, he owned you. He showed you. It's like, no, it really didn't. Yeah. So now we wait and see. And that's what makes sports great. That's what makes sports fantastic. But let me be very clear here. I still think I'm right. I wouldn't have done this. Um, Do I think it's the end of the world to get Kirk Cousins cap hit down? No, I think that's fine. But you had a, you had a chance to create. And you said a new culture. You like that? You like that? And if you're going to create a new culture, if you're going to turn the page on things, that usually means turning the page on several things. So just to be clear, Kirk stands celebrate that's awesome it's a great day but understand understand that doesn't make the team necessarily right i want people to know here because there's a lot of people that have probably tuned in discovered purple daily or mackie and judd at some point you know we've been doing a show together for eight years uh, but but people who have discovered us maybe in the first few months or something or last few months here's what's going to happen the next six to twelve months i plan on moving on and I plan on talking about the team as constructed with Kirk. And I think what Judd's going to do is com- could just completely drag his heels. And, like, if you think the next six, there's not a game to be played until week one. And so, like, the yep. conversation's over. No, Judd is going to drag you through the mud and tell you how wrong you were <laughs> for signing this contract. And I will do that sometimes because I, I generally agree with Judd on this. I would not have signed this contract extension, even though it does bring the cap hit down for 2022. Right. This move signals 
they are planning to win big. They're going to make, I mean, they're not taking that one year reset. We'll get the statements here. The Twins made a bunch of moves this weekend. We'll get to other stuff here too. Um, but I do find it funny that the two biggest victory laps Cousins Crusaders have taken lately, like in the last two years, are one, when he signs another ironclad contract coming off of 700 consecutive days of 500 or below football. He signs a new contract, victory lap, oh, celebrate, you know, throw the parade. And then the other one is when Matthew Stafford won the Super Bowl. It, like, validated the notion of, well, maybe but Kirk can too at some point. It's like those are the victory laps we're taking here with Kirk Cousins. But, Congratulations. But that's what makes this so interesting. And And to be clear, I am not going to drag my heels on Kirk. What I'm going to do is say, so far, the way the Vikings are going about constructing a roster where they fired the GM and coach, um, and there's a lot to be done yet, but if you try and run things back as much as you you might, because certain people with the team, who, let me be very clear, are above the coach and GM, and I'll say this slowly, aren't football people, are convinced we have to be good. If, if, if we're not good, it's worthless. Um, and certain people with this team might feel a little bit guilty because let's just say hypothetically a soccer team diverted their attention from their football team and now, damn it, they're back. They're back to run the place. I'm telling you right now, I'll put, I'll put us up against them as far as what should we do? What should we do? Like I just – I really struggle with this, and this goes well beyond Kirk. I really struggle with this assumption that just because you like a team, the team is always right. And I really well, – The Vikings are wrong a lot. I know, but what I'm saying is if you bring in a new GM and coach, um, my belief is that um, if I start to see the imprint of the people who own the team on that team, especially because they feel guilty about prior sins of ignoring the product – which I think from a football standpoint happened. That's just a guess, but I really do. Um, then I struggle there. So this is not about me on, on Kirk. And and I'm not going to continually say, I mean, the pressure's on Kirk, don't get me wrong. But this is a whole thing about we are going to essentially try and run things back. And good luck to you. Hope it well, works. Well, let's get, in, let's get into statements here. All right. That's what we do on Mondays. Go around the room. And to your point, I'll start with the first statement here. Nice. And then we will, as promised, talk Minnesota Twins baseball later oh in the show God. for the first time in about six months. That's right. Um, I'm not full on reporting this, but having a couple conversations yesterday, my sense is this decision on Kirk was driven in large part by ownership. And as an extension, driven by Kevin O'Connell's previous relationship with Kirk, which if you want to go all the way back to Harbaugh versus Kevin O'Connell, a big part of the reason why Quasey wanted Jim Harbaugh. Jim Harbaugh was Quasey's number one option. Right. Ownership wasn't as sold on it. You know, that's why Jim came in so confident. Jim came in with the backing of the new general manager and through collaboration and feedback and you know eight voices being in the room they decided well let's go with Kevin O'Connell because it's less likely that we have some sort of nuclear implosion you know with Jim Harbaugh having a falling out with the front office plus Kevin O'Connell has a built-in relationship with Cousins and ideally we'd like to keep being competitive here i mean just putting some of the puzzle pieces together that's how I understand the last two or three months have played out. The Wolves statement within a statement here. Mm -hmm. The Wolves are paralyzed by the fear of being irrelevant. So when they see a team winning seven, eight, nine games, they think, oh, we're close. Like, we're relevant. We're playing relevant football. We're in the mix. Let's just keep pushing forward, right? And oftentimes they will die on a hill to protect relevance, what they view as relevance. Again, to me, relevance is competing for Super Bowls. They view relevance as playing meaningful November and December football and then maybe play a playoff game once in a while and just and just keeping interesting and compelling and going forward. And they will protect that oftentimes at the expense of a higher ceiling. A reset year seemed very, very obvious here to me. Like everyone, like everyone's looking at this saying, all right, you fired everyone and you got your chance to take a step back. You got kind of a grace period here. And ownership 
comes in and says, we'd really rather not take a step back. We know that amassing draft capital and uh, and and clearing out the cap is is you know that's definitely an option, but we just don't want to fall into the trap of Lions, Browns for twenty years, Jets. They are paralyzed by that fear more than they crave top end Super Bowl success because the path to get there might be risky. So they'd rather keep doing this. Like they view this as oh Steelers Giants, oh we're you know Steelers Giants, we're just competitive. But the Steelers and Giants pop up and win Super Bowls once every 10 years. Right. That's the biggest difference. So I guess like I, they're, them being paralyzed by the fear of being irrelevant, I think, is driving a lot of this with Kirk Cousins. So, so let's talk about that for a second, because I think that's an interesting, an interesting point, and I agree completely with most of that most of the time. Because I think that there's a lot of places and times, especially in a, a league like this where parity is king, where you do think, we've got a chance, we've got a chance. And you might be totally wrong, but you think based on circumstances, right? So here's where I struggle, though. What you just said in the middle of that statement, I think is 100% true, which is if you have common sense, and, and I mean, the Wilfs are clearly good at business. There's no, like, big debate there. Oh, they're, you know, they've done a very good job there. How is this not just an obvious fork in the road? How is this not just, uh, you know what? We went for it, which again, I think is incredibly important. So it wasn't like this floundering, bleeped up franchise embarrassed itself. I, they signed Kirk in 2018 to go for it, which I actually appreciate to this day. So how do you not get here now and, and say the last two years were not good? Um, the last four were more difficult than they should have, have been. But in 2017, despite the disappointment, we made a conference championship game. And then we tried to go for it. That didn't work. Now is a perfect time not to rebuild, not to purposely be terrible, but to retool and reset. How do you miss? Like, to me, God is telling you right now, it's time to reset. Reset. Like, I'm giving you, there's every, like. No, no, no. God's telling you, put 70 million guaranteed in the yeah, pocket of Kirk Cousins. But that's what God's telling me. But, but that's what I want an explanation on. Like, everything about this to me screamed, screamed. If you win, gravy right now. But more importantly, let's set th things up. And and again, this goes beyond Kirk. So, like, I'm not solely focused on, on Kirk here. I am focused on this thought of we can be super competitive. I, this is a point where I just couldn't disagree more. I don't think that there's a need to try and run something back. I think the need right now is to is to look at where things are, retool, reset, and guess what? If you do that right, you can bounce back and be really good really quickly. But the Wilfs view they don't they don't look at three and five year plans with this team. They look at they look one year at a time. When's the last time you thought, oh, they're looking five years out into the future? Probably when they, when they hired Mike Zimmer, probably, right? Where they, you know, they were a three-win team, they hire yeah. Mike Zimmer. Otherwise, it's been a series of, oh, my God, what do we do now? First-round pick for, oh, Bridgewater gets hurt. First-round pick for Bradford. Got to go now, right? Uh, and then it was, okay, well, uh, get rid of Keenum. Uh, let's just let's uh, sign the biggest fully guaranteed contract in NFL history, and we'll deal with it later, yeah. Kirk Cousins. And then it's, okay, let's... Uh, Let's kick the can down the road again and sign into an extension because we got to bring the cap hit down for this year so we can but win eight what, games. Like it's, it's, they don't ever look at a three-year long view. I understand that, but I, but this is the one opportunity. Like it's, it hits you in the head here. It's a swinging can. You open the door, it's went bang right off your head. I agree. Like it's, I, I agree it's, with nev you. it's never been more obvious, and and it's not a rebuild. It's not f five years. I think if you were, if you do this right it's not three years but you just had an opportunity now i just i can't buy into we're going to reset the culture and then you really don't yeah i mean it's like, the like don't tell the me quarterback is a huge part of the yeah what, the, what they're saying here is rick spielman and more so mike zimmer were the cultural problems correct and they are saying kirk cousins is a cultural solution I fundamentally disagree with that. Uh, yes. Regardless of price. Like the money and the value matters and they and they have 
they've brought that cap hit into a workable range now. They've they've saved fifteen million dollars to the cap. He's no longer one of the five biggest cap hits. He's number six. Like it's still big, yep. but it's more reasonable. And I will give them that. It's a more reasonable cap hit. And now they can. There's there's ways that they can bring in some offensive line help here. They're still pressed up against the cap, but you know it makes it more breathable. But the Kirk Cousins thing isn't just about how much money he makes. That's a huge part of it. It's about him as a player, him as a leader, him in big moments, right? Improvisational moments where the other team knows you have to throw. You're on the road. It's well, prime going to fix all that. He has Phil. shrunk largely in those moments. Not every time, but he has Kevin. shrunk more often than his than his peers at the top of the food chain. Kevin and they are banking on fixing uh, and changing that. Yes, they are. We can change him. Don't forget. We can change him. All right, Declan, next statement. All right, my first statement on the Kirk uh, extension is, you will be forced to like that for two more years. You'll be forced to like that for two more years. The Vikings brain trust has opted to go all in on Kirk Cousins for their starting quarterback for the next two years. And while I'm surprised they caved at the demand for Cousins, he'll be this team's quarterback for the next two seasons. But here's the beautiful thing. We get to see if Cousins was indeed held back by the evil Mike Zimmer and his staff, right? If Kevin O'Connell can unlock the Vikings and turn the Minnesota Vikings offense into a modern team and translates to wins, then great. We'll see another level of Kirk. And I'm not talking about box score Kirk. I'm talking about shedding his mold as a guy who does not rise up in situations, right? Now he can throw daggers. Now he can change that perception of him that other people have, including the majority of our show and people who listen to our show, that he's not good enough and he doesn't rise up in moments. Well, they're committing that, no, he is good enough. And he can rise up in those moments. We're going to create and tailor an offense that makes it look like he can. But I think the only issue I have is like when we played that Pelissero clip off the top is he's worked with Jefferson for two years now. He's been with Adam Thielen his entire career. Dalvin Cook's been here the whole damn time. Maybe the only thing that you can say he hasn't had is a stable interior offensive lineman. Everything else has been there. And that, is, that's, and that is a big thing. Like Totally. I wish that they would have solved that at some point in the last four years so we could know for sure, right? Because yeah. like that's the big outstanding argument for doing this, which is, hey, these guys are going to come in and they're actually going to fix the guard and center debacle that the Vikings have been dealing with. I mean, it just had, and, it had, and it's it's a fair point. Kirk hasn't, you, you can't put Kirk behind a rickety interior offensive line and expect to get the best out of him in all these moments. And I think what I am saying is people are using that and the defense the last two years as cover up, saying he's perfect, he's the victim, and and they're not looking at you know some of the fatal flaws in his game. But like to Declan's point, like that that's that's what they're doing. They're literally saying, all right, he has emerged from this wreckage, and he is part of the solution. And they aren't taking a one year reset grace period to jump into things. They are literally jumping into. What I think the bar should be is Super Bowl contention starting in 2022. Good luck. The Brad, <laughs> Good luck. Uh, the Bradford comp right now becomes uh, super intriguing based on, on this. So I think the Bradford detractors looked and said, look at all the picks. Look at all the bad passes. I'm Come on, those stats aren't, aren't great. Kirk Cousins is going to be called upon in 2022 to throw those passes. And some of them are his – if if his you know, Stafford or Bradford? Oh, Bradford, or I'm sorry, Stafford, Matthew Stafford. <laughs> I keep saying, I keep saying, uh, uh, Sam Bradford, and I don't know why. I'm getting old. You like anyway, quarterbacks with floppy sleeves on their jersey. Anyway, yeah, yeah, they they both have the same look or something. And anyway, to go back to Stafford, um, he threw a ton of picks. But the thing about it is, it's because he was put into situations where high risk passes ha- had to be thrown, right? So, like, Kirk's going to be in that camp. And, and if Kirk does that, he probably can have success. I just don't know if Kirk has that gene. Like, that, that takes a lot of gumption at times to throw passes that might be picked, might drag down your stats, but the coaching staff still wants. I think there's a difference between a coaching staff that is very afraid of, of, of risk and, and a player and a coaching staff that wants to avoid its star quarterback throwing picks but isn't going to put that star quarterback 
in a position to check down and never throw picks, if that makes sense. Well, that's speak, the difference. Speaking of risk, our friends at Federated Mutual Insurance Company are all about risk management and helping your business maximize its success. You know, a lot of parallels here to the purple. It's a, it's a, it's a viable business looking to get to another level. Yeah. Maybe you just need more frontline protection. Maybe the answer here is in a couple hours here as we record this, you know, the free agency tampering window opens up. And uh, maybe they're going to find some uh, some insurance for uh, for the quarterback up front. Federated has been around for over 100 years. They've got some of the best people, resources, and tools in the industry to help your business. Federatedinsurance.com. And remember, at Federated, it's our business to protect yours. Also, a quick shout-out to our friends at Dennis Kirk. They've been uh, longtime partners and supporters of us here. So, you know, anytime we bring someone into the fold here... If you can support them, you will support us at Score North, Mackie and Judd, Purple Daily. And if you like to ride, if you're a motorcycle guy or gal, Dennis Kirk has been all over it in terms of 160,000 parts and accessories in stock. They have same-day shipping on orders placed before 8 p.m. They have free shipping on orders over $89. And whatever you ride, whether it's a Harley, an Indian, Metro Cruiser, Sport Bike, you'll find what you need at DennisKirk.com. Back to Judd here. All right. My statement, he better be a miracle worker. And I am talking about new Vikings defensive coordinator, Ed Donatel. Mm. And mm. why do I say that? Well, it's very clear that uh, um, the Cousins extension last night and from what we've seen, that the Vikings very much think we can win now. And, and this is in a division. Keep in mind, Rodgers back in Green Bay. Uh, conference that Brady has now decided after, what, about a month to unretire back in Tampa Bay. So this defense, to be clear, and, and yes, there is a very good case to be made that Mike Zimmer had lost his fastball. But that being said, this defense also personnel-wise was bad. It needs a lot of changes. It needs work. It needs fine tuning. Now if you were in a in a year where we all said, you know what? You are retooling. We'd say, let's see some improvement. This makes it incumbent that Donatello's defense doesn't show some improvement that it shows a lot of improvement quickly. Now, you say, yeah, but Judd, they can sign guys, right? Well, they're still I believe slightly over a million dollars over the cap with the cousins extension done and his cap smoothed out more moves can be made to create space they but will. but as Phil said the issue there is what the offensive line needs help Brandon Scherf who could be signed as their veteran right guard expensive a center expensive and so now the question becomes how many of the current components of this defense can you take in, in a 3-4 base, re-scheme, and help them? And so, I have one thing to say, more so probably to Ed Donatel than anybody else right now with the Vikings franchise, and that is best of luck to you, sir, because the pressure, the pressure that you thought, oh, there might be some now, I really think has gone up based on this team's assumption that they are going to be ultra competitive to win a division title and probably go farther than that in 2022. So let's, let, I want to pick out something you said, you know, because you're, you're putting pressure on Donatel because the Vikings just signed up for another Super Bowl window. And I'm seeing a lot of people push back at that notion that, well, why, why all of a sudden now? I mean, this team, this team hasn't been above 500 since 2019. Why all of a sudden now are you guys just like jumping to – why are you putting Super Bowl on them when you know that the roster is not ready to win? I'm not saying – and I'll just answer for myself. I'm not saying that they are going to win a Super Bowl or that the roster is currently Super Bowl caliber. You know, Maybe there's some strings they can pull in free agency and via trade the next two or three weeks. Yes. I'm saying when given a clear out – and nine quarterback hungry teams. Teams made we know we know that teams made offers for Kirk Cousins. I don't know what those were. I don't know if they got a first round pick or a third round pick, but like teams offered you a chance to reset in 2022 and have a grace period season. And you said, no. Not only are we not going to do that, we're going to bring him back. He's 34 years old. We're going to bring him back. He's still the sixth highest paid quarterback, even with the adjustment to the salary caps. So let's not act like, you know. Tom Brady's coming back for $25 million to the cap, all right? So the greatest quarterback of all time is going to make less. When you bring him back, 
yep. and you forego the draft capital and assets and cap space that you would have received by saying goodbye to him, what else are you signing up for? Right. You're signing up to compete for a Super Bowl, right? So don't shy away from those expectations now. Like, why would you? Why, why would you willingly opt into a middle ground of like nine wins? You're not opting in for nine wins. You're opting in for eleven or twelve wins in a Super Bowl. That's to me. That's what they're saying, right? Right. But that's not us. We we are we are going along with what they are doing. So so like I didn't change my tune be, because I suddenly decided to. I did because it's very clear what their thoughts are. So and. and to be fair, keep in mind, I believe that that the three of us, but certainly me, went into 2021 saying no excuses then. The thing is, I am willing to play along with, with especially the Kirk stands, which is the constant moving of the goalpost to accommodate their guy. Okay? So I said no excuses. Going into 2021... And by about four games in, what I was told was, oh, you, no excuses. What are you talking about? I mean, Greg Joseph missed the field goal in Arizona. Uh, well, Dalvin has been Cook, called for nine holding penalties. Dalvin yeah. Cook fumbled in Cincinnati. What are you talking about? No excuses. How can Kirk win? And so I begrudgingly said, okay, go ahead. Bring on the excuses. But at some point in time here, um, the Vikings continue to tell us something that I don't even necessarily agree with, which is we think that we can win 12 games. We think that that we can win 13 games, a division title, and make a playoff run. So that's not me. That's not you. In that's the Vikings. And in fairness to them, they have created a two-year window here. They're, it's not just like a 2022 window. They've created a two-year window. And so maybe you take steps forward. There are some interesting free agents that are in their mid twenties. I mean, Austin Corbett is the guard from Wash from uh, from the Rams. Scherf is the guard from Washington. That's thirty. Right. right. I think they land one of those two guys. By the way, I don't know. Like, people might be listening to this after they already like agree to uh, terms with some of these players. But this is a two year runway. So if they take steps and the offense looks great and and things are changing, they still get two thousand twenty three to pay it off. But make no mistake. They have created a two-year window of Super Bowl contention here by bringing Kirk Cousins back. But mm -hmm. for some reason, again, like, I don't know if it's like a Minnesota thing or if it's a Vikings thing just because we've been, you know, bashed over the head for 60 years of failure and coming up short. People hate that expectation. When you say, okay, you will be judged yeah. by this high bar. Yes. People hate that. Well, no, 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 no. That's not fair. I mean, and you know oh, why? This, this, this. That... The majority, I believe, of those people who like are like, no, you guys, you can't. They, the Purple Positivity Brigade is the '98 Moss fans, like those I, people I'm, who. I'm one of those, by well, the way. Well, but so am I. But but and and like so in '98, I, I was 28, and so I think a lot of fans who were bored with the Vikings up until Moss, who, by the way changed the game so it, it was great mm -hmm. i think they joined the brigade and what happened was they were told nothing but sunshine rainbows and then they went to the nfc title game and yeah. saw that disaster yeah. and their they so their purple positivity is mixed with a how dare you talk about what basically it is my purple ptsd right so i think fans of our show who are really really smart are in with us but I think that there is a certain very important group of Vikings fans from back then who basically say, how dare you have the expectation of we're going to Miami from back then. I'm telling you, I really think that that left marks and those people are still to this day devastated by the fact that we are asking for them to do something that, of course, they have not done since, what, the 1976 Yeah, season. well, so and the other thing, you know, ha having – Having grown up through that era, you know, I was 12 years old. I cried after the 1998 NFC Championship game. And I think what's hard for people to wrap their heads around since then is that was like the perfect football team in Vikings history, right? It was the perfect offense, the highest scoring offense the NFL had ever seen to that point. They were beating the brakes off everybody. 15 and 1, scoring 35, 40 points every single game. And the defense was opportunistic. They had John Randall. I mean, they had. It wasn't the best defense in the league, right. but they had some dudes on that defense. 
And if you can't even get to the Super Bowl with that team, right? How dare you? Then it, it like it almost like throws your equilibrium off as a Vikings fan. You're like, well, I haven't seen any team look like that since I've been watching Vikings football. And right. if that team couldn't get to a Super Bowl, then it's not fair to set Super Bowl expectations for any team, really, unless <laughs> yeah, unless you find the second coming of Randy Moss. So I think our our equilibrium has just been thrown off as Vikings fans. So, all right, hit, uh, Dex, hit us with one more. Yeah. And obviously, plenty more to say throughout the week on the Vikings, but Dex, hit us with one more. Story. You guys uh, want the synonyms, according to Webster's Dictionary, with the word tamper? Because it is the NFL tampering period that starts today. Do you guys, sure, guys want yeah. these synonyms? Okay. By the way, I bit the crap out of my lip about two oh. statements ago. It's oh, like, no. I don't know how you're I so, did. Are you bleeding? You're it's so, like swollen. I'm like bleeding. You're so, uh, well, that, that's the worst. That blood taste. I hate that. Yeah. And then I have first, a, I'm going to probably bite it six more times. Yeah. It's puffy, no. you know, and you're so I mad. A, too. I'm struggling. I have a canker here. sore in my lip oh, for like worst, the first yeah. time in years I on the inside. One. So yeah. Yeah, I don't know what the hell's going on. Excess anyway. alcohol will cause canker sores. I don't know if you were partaking in some adult beverages. I wasn't doing excess. I was very well tamed this weekend because I was at the X for Friday, Saturday, and there's no booze at the Minnesota State High School tournament, which is a shame, by the way. There is yeah. alcohol there. Real, real quick, you know how uh, canker sores usually last like a week or so, uh-huh. uh, just on their own. If you uh, if you want to cut the time off by like two or three days, I would say three or four times a day minimum. Literally put salt, salt in the canker sore. Oh yeah, I've done it. It hurts like, like hell. crazy, but yeah. it will heal I've faster that. if you do that. I've done that. It's worth it. It's <laughs> worth it. Okay. All right, the back these back these synonyms of tampering. Like uh, these are these are the first seven eight words that I found. Fiddle, diddle, fool, <laughs> mess, monkey, play, tinker, toy, twiddle. Those are the first. Ten synonyms, basically, huh. with the word tampering, according to Webster's Dictionary. And with the tampering period open, I am excited for the Vikings to diddle with their offensive line, wow. fool with their salary cap, mess with their cornerbacks, monkey with their 3-4 and 4-3 fit, play with their offensive weapons, and tinker, toy, and twiddle away this aging <laughs> roster to get more out of being a 7-8 to eight win team that's missed the playoffs the last two seasons. I'm excited for what the heck the Vikings are going to do here. Uh, they did tender a contract to Greg Joseph right before we started recording, so at least we have a kicker still in place, but I want to know what they're going to do on defense. Can they get that offensive guard uh, to help fortify the interior of their offensive line? I'm excited to see what tampering and fiddling and diddling they're going to be doing. In the next coming days. <laughs> hey, this I'm, I'm going to tease Purple Daily here because we don't even know where Purple Daily is going to go today because we're going to we're going to record the episode sort of reacting to things that happen. We also have more Kirk Cousins thoughts, but um, getting a and Judd's on this thread too, but getting a little steam on what the Vikings may have been offered in trades for Kirk Cousins. I wouldn't say it's kind of third hand, but we'll we're going to. I'm going to throw a potential scenario out that the Vikings may or may not have turned down on Purple Daily today. Mm. For you, guys. Mm. Wow. that's a heck of a tease. Did you, did you see Mackey. the same thread that I was looking at there, Judd? Um, yes. I'll give you. I'll give you a minute. Okay. This is the second time I've heard. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. 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 Uh, mm. Really? Huh? Mm. Uh, Reckless speculation. Yeah, that's it. it uh, it's juicy. It's juicy. It will get picked up. <laughs> and then it will be shot down by the Kirk stands who said <laughs> score North just made more stuff up because the Carolina Panthers laughed because the Carolina Panthers who are just the greatest franchise of all time would never lie. Amazing. Okay. Uh, 